Today we're talking about something small, simple, and so versatile, the servo motor. Basically a motor made for strength and precision, and you will see them everywhere, from toys to robots. So when you buy a servo, it usually comes in a bag similar to this. It contains the servo motor itself, and a bag with this plastic attachment called horns, three screws, and some accessories. The one I have right here is called SG90, but every average servo has three wires, red is positive, brown is ground, and the signal comes in yellow. The housing usually has two holes for mounting, and this upper gear is where it actually rotates. See the two screws at the bottom? Only remove them if you plan to open the whole thing. Now, there are four main components that make up a servo motor. A tiny DC motor that spins very fast, a gear train to slow the rotation down while increasing torque, a potentiometer, which is the one in charge of tracking the rotation angle, and also a control board. This speaks to the potentiometer and also matches speed and direction. One of the best things about the servo is that the signal comes directly from the board. You can control them with different Arduinos, SP32s, Raspberry Pis, tons of options. And you don't need extra drivers like stepper motors or BLDC motors. Just plug them in and, well, mostly, I will get to that in a second. Here is a quick test to show you how they work. First, we assemble one of the plastic pieces at the top and add the small screw to keep it in place. All we need right now is an Arduino Nano, three male-to-male -male cables, and a protoboard. Connecting them is pretty simple. Positive and negative to 5 volts and ground. Signal to a PMW capable pin. And that's it, you're all set. Once you plug the board to a computer, you can move to programming. In this example, I am using an Arduino Nano, so for the programming, I'm using the Arduino IDE software. There are a couple of pre-save examples. To see them, just go to File, Example, Servo, and pick Sweep. You will see the servo library is called at the top, and the rest of the code is explained at the right of every line. It even has links to the electronics diagram where they added capacitors for stability. I didn't add them because I want to keep this simple, but it is worth noting that there are ways to keep the servos more stable, because sometimes they can start moving recklessly, and that can be because of a low quality signal, either from programming, loose wires, and so many other options, and that can be a pain. To upload the code to a Nano, go to Tools, Port, click the one available, and then just press the arrow pointed to the right. That means upload and your servo will come to life. The sweep example moves the servo motor from side to side, while the knob lets you move the servo with a potentiometer. Pretty cool stuff. For practice, you can start by tweaking these programs according to your needs, and then check the endless examples across YouTube. This setup is great to check the movement of your servo. However, when you add it to a project, things start to change. Let me explain. First, feed your Arduino Nano with 9 volts from, let's say, a power supply, and only connect the signal from the servo to it. The positive and negative wires from the servo should be powered by another source within specs. But always check the data sheet because values change all the time depending on the brand. With this setup, we can get the most out of our servo motors. Why did I do this? Well, if the servo starts pushing or pulling anything, and that includes your hand holding the motor, the current spikes, and microcontrollers can't handle that. They are made for controlling, not powering devices, so only use them for the signal. Now that we're feeding the servo with another power source, I can use it to move objects. This is where we use the side screws for attachment. Now let's talk about upgrades, starting with durability. The SG90 has plastic gears, fine for light use, but if you want it to last, definitely go with metal gears like the MG90D. It is slightly more expensive, but much more reliable. Plus, it is almost the same size to the SG90, so swapping one another is really easy. Now how about higher torque? Both of these have around 2.2 kilograms per centimeter, meaning that at 1 centimeter from the axis, the force to push or pull is 2.2 kilograms. The farther away you attach from the axis, the lower the torque you will have. This is the torque equation with an example in case you want to screenshot it and save it for later. Now for more power, you can check out the MG995R. This servo has a torque of 10 kilograms per centimeter, a lot more powerful, and for attachment points. Also comes with more accessories than the other two. Pick the one according to the torque you need, just make sure to keep an eye on the voltage and current requirements. 
Given all of these characteristics, it's easy to see why servo motors are used in pretty much everywhere. I personally have used three of them for the deployment of the spikes in my dome shield, which added this really cool effect, in the Charizard project for the movement of the wings and arms, and many others. Now let's summarize the pros and cons of using a servo motor. First, they are very easy to plug and program. They are also very practical, there is no need for an external driver like other motors require, and they have precise rotation. Cons, no position feedback on standard servos, limited torque and range, and less holding torque compared to, let's say, a stepper motor, depending on the version. Finally, here are some three quick tips. Always use a separate power source from the controller, upgrade to Metal Gears if possible for a more reliable build, and if you need more servos than your board has connections for, check out the PCA9685. It allows you to manage up to 16 servo motors with one microcontroller. Of course, make sure the microcontroller you're using is able to process all of that information, but this is a great addition. Also power them from a different source from the controller. So that's the servo motor. Precise, surprisingly powerful, and incredibly versatile. Whether you're working on robots, automation, or prototypes, is one of the most practical tools you can have. Hit like if you enjoyed this breakdown, and subscribe for more Simple Tech explanations. I'll see you next time.